In order to use Kyle Studio Cloud, we have to use the Chrome browser. So in Windows, we're just going to click on the Chrome browser, and we're going to type in here is os.embed.com. Once we do that, we're going to log in to our embed account, which we've set up previously. We're going to type in our email address and say next. Then we're going to type in our password. And at this point, we should be able to just click on Kyle Studio Cloud. Now we've got Workspace and AST. We're going to go to Workspace. I've already created a number of projects in here. And we're going to take a look at this one first, Lab 2A Embed OS 2. And when we open this up, we're going to right mouse click here and say Set Active Project. And that, because we can only have one active project at a time. Then we're going to go down here to main.cpp. And here is our code here. Now what we're also going to do is we're going to bring up PuTTY. And some of the settings on PuTTY are going to be to have implicit carriage return and implicit line feed both unchecked here. Make sure we've got local echo force off and local line editing auto. So when we go back here to session, we've set up to whatever COM port that we have when we take a look at here and we take a look at device manager. We should be able to find what our COM port is here and our COM port happens to be COM5 here and that's why I've selected COM5 here in this line and 9600 as our baud rate. Now once you've got that set up, one other thing you should set up for later is under translation, go all the way down to CP437. And that's basically it for the setup for PuTTY. So when we go back here to session, we should be able to click here, default settings and save that and say open. And it's gonna open up a nice little terminal window for us here. Now, this is a console application. What that means is getting input from our keyboard and sending output to our screen. Now, if we take a look at this version here, and if you've plugged in your Freedom K64, you should see something like this where it's green. If it's not plugged in, please plug it in now until you get this. Now, we've got Embed OS 2, we've got Embed OS 5, and Embed OS 6. And we're going to be taking a look at the differences between Embed OS 2, 5, and 6. Now the first thing you'll notice here that it's got build project and it's got here run project and over here it says open serial monitor and open serial monitor isn't working because we're going to be using putty instead here. Now there's two different ways to work with embed OS 2 and the first one is to actually just click here in builder project and it's going to generate a bin file and if we right mouse click and say show in folder we should be able to then grab this, leftmost click and grab it, hold down the mouse button and drop it here to DAPLINK. And at that point, all we have to do is hit the reset on the microcontroller. We should be able to go to our terminal screen and start typing. Hi there, how are you? And we can see the message coming up here. And if we hit the enter key, it goes back to the start of the next line. This is one way to run it, is to just generate a bin file. And the nice thing is the bin file will be in your downloads directory. You can download it anytime you want. But there's another way you can run it as well, using OS2. The other way to run this is to actually just hit this button here, which is Run Project. And it says Building here, Project Compile, Preparing to Run. It's going to give us a number of messages here. And uh, Erasing Sectors, and it's Programming or Flash Now, or Disconnecting from Debug Unit and it says it's running. So again, we can go back here and we can say, hi there, how are you? And either way is fine. This way you're directly connecting to the board through Kyle Studio and Kyle Studio is programming the board. So those are the two ways you can do it with Embed OS 2. Now we can go back to here to take a look at our code. We can make some changes. So one of the changes we're gonna make is we're gonna go here or slash star and star slash here and we're going to comment out this part here because if you take a look at it the way it works here is it says input equals get character from standard in and standard in happens to be our keyboard then we're going to put character whatever came in and we're putting that out to our output buffer which is standard out and then we're going to f flush that to our screen so this is without doing this extra bit in here now this extra bit in here is saying if it happens to be a 0d which is an enter key we're going to also put out a line feed and that's why we saw it going from here to the next line because we had carriage return which puts you back to the start of the same line plus a line feed to move you down now if we comment this out what we can do is just hit run button again and it's going to build it very quickly this time and when it's finished building 
and it's connecting to the board and it's uh, programming it and flashing it down into our board now programming the flash you can see we've got our things here now if we run it now and we say hi there how how are you this time when we hit the enter key it goes back to the start of the same line because with embed OS 2 every time you hit the enter key to go to the next line you have to generate a line feed which is a 0A and that's what we saw originally that it was working fine so let's just control Z back here and get back so this this version of the code will actually go to a new line because the carriage return line feed is really a backslash N here